All right, so a couple weeks ago, probably more like a month at this point, I asked a question about should I ever do dungeon guides, and the overwhelming opinion was no, I shouldn't, and I also gave my own opinions why on why I shouldn't and why I wouldn't bother, because I have a mechanics-based guide that is more fitting for what you should do with worrying about dungeons. So, uh, on that, someone suggested, suggested, uh, I should go through all the dungeons and rate them. And so, I thought that would actually be kind of fun. And so I decided I'm going to do that, and here we are. I'm going to be raiding all 77 dungeons that are currently in the game. That includes Praetorium and Castrum Meridianum, both of the eight mans, and... Yeah, just everything that is in the Duty Finder marked as a dungeon. The trials, the, the, the special raids like Baldesian Arsenal and all that, I consider those raids and all that. Deliberum, Regine, etc, etc. 24 mans would also get their own list. If if people want to see me do the 24 mans, all the different raids, etc, uh, comment down below that you want to see me do that next. But for now, oh, also, I'm, I don't know how it all works. I'm new to this whole tier making thing. If I can link it down below in the description, I will. And, oh, there's my timeline. Uh, and I will link it down below in the description. And if you want to make your own tier, share it around. Say, hey, Mr. Misshapen Chair, you do tier lists. Even though I, I don't, I think he only did like one and as a joke. But hey, do this one. Raid all the dungeons because Wes Galber named you. And that's the first name that came to his mind out of everyone. I never talked to him before or don't know him, so... I just know he's a guy. But yeah, let's let's just stop with the delaying. Let's actually get right into it. So, starting with the beginning, Sestasha. So, Sestasha, I'm just going to put it right there. I'm going to just randomly place it on the board to start. I'm not actually rating it as an A, but just so you know for the future, I'm going to be randomly placing on the board. Uh, Sestasha, as a tutorial dungeon, does a good job. The pools don't hit very hard, unless you, like, do a lot. Uh, there are some annoying bits, but, like, back when they went trying to make every dungeon a straight line, the exploration aspects were really, really well done. Like, at the beginning, the first area is you have to look at a note at the very beginning, and it's just off in a little, little corridor at the very beginning of the stage. Okay, you need to do some exploring in dungeons. Then you get into the first big room, and there's not really any exploring, but it's big and open. It's the first part where it stops being just a straight line. And yeah, it's still a straight line, but it's big and open. It's not just this cramped little ledge that you're on. And then you get to the first boss. You need to use the note that you found. And then you get into the second area. Which is the... Oh, no, that's the second area is just a quick launch into the second boss. Which, it, I guess, is just like, hey, let's introduce ads on top of just basic boss. And then there's the big open area with all the cages for you to explore. All the different areas are like, hey, you have a key, but you still have to find the way forward. And it's like, if they had continued on that kind of design track... That's good, that's great. They didn't, I guess because people don't like mechanics, but hey, if they had gone on that, that would have been great. And then all the bosses, a slow evolution of bosses of, hey, this is how bosses work. First it's a basic boss, then it's a basic boss with two ads. Then it's the same basic boss with two ads, but in the middle of the fight, you get more ads, and then there's the final boss, which is a big boss, that will summon ads if you fail mechanics. Which you could just ignore now because DPS, but maybe day one you had to actually do those gates, but you could just ignore them. But it's an evolution that does teach if you're paying attention. Now you have to be paying attention, but hey, so... But as a dungeon, I'm going to say Sestasha is, like... Yes, it's basic, it's the very first dungeon of the game, but that's why it's going to be 
the base level we need to beat. Sestasha is just the base level you have to beat. Okay, so, Tam Terra Deepcroft. This one's easy. I am putting it right below Sestasha. I'm putting it in C. I don't hate it. It allows for a lot of big pulling, and that's nice. I like big my big pulls. But, like, it's the same boss three times, and then the final boss. Like, I guess it makes sense within the story context, but thematic, like, it, it's kind of boring. It's it's kind of boring. Like, I don't really have much to say about Tam Tower. Besides, like, I like the big pools. But also, the actual mechanics are really dumb and annoying. And I guess it's trying to introduce the idea of you will be finding a lot of similar enemies. And also, they can buff themselves, so watch out for buffs, I, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. Cup of Mines. F tier. I... <sighs> Like, it, it's it's trying. It is trying so hard, but the the first, like, attempt that you could do to big pool, the enemies will just disengage because you get too far away. It's like one of the only dungeons in the games that, have, that has leashing distances. Like, I, I, I can't think of a single other dungeon in the entire game where enemies have leashing distances, where if you try to... Wall-to-wall Copper Bell Mines. It's not many enemies, but like one or two of them will unleash, de and go reset. Where every other dungeon in the game, even Sestasha, even Tamterra, enemies will follow you the entire time. And that's like... Yeah, I, I'm... I'm... I just... I'm just making sure this is working still. I... I... I, I don't... No, that's... It's... That's dumb. And then the bosses, the bosses are just terrible. Like, the, f the first boss is just a bunch of ads. It's a bunch of trash mobs. And then there's a big guy at the very end. And then you get to the second, the slime. That slime, it confuses so many people. They had, I don't know how many of you know this, but that bomb in the second boss, the second boss is slime with the bombs. Those bombs used to have, like, a tenth of the HP. You could kill them in like three hits. They used to be that weak, but with power creep and people just not getting the mechanics, they had to massively up its HP. And it's like, oh my gosh, so ugh. the last boss is fine though. Like that one's trying to be like, hey, you have a DPS race and then you can slowly be overwhelmed by enemies, which Okay, that that was that's fine that one. But generally, I Copper Bell Mines is just terrible. Halatali, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say it's an A, but I will put it above Sestasha. Just be, I like this dungeon just because. Well, let me think. No, I'm I'm gonna put it above Sestasha still just because. For the most part, it is a fun dungeon. It starts adding in all the different kinds of AoE markers. It's the first dungeon where AoEs are going to be a big thing and not just one enemy is going to use AoEs. You have the bombs. You have the knights. The first boss does try to do something with adds that you could just ignore now. I mean, you probably could always ignore it. The second boss is really, really dumb and like... If it wasn't for the second boss, I would probably put it at A, but no, it's still a B. And then third boss is mostly fine. It combines the first boss and the second boss. So there is an evolution, and that's cool. But, like, in general, it's kind of... Yeah. Thousand Maws of Total Rack. Let's put it right there for now. So... Again, I think that they could have done the exploration kind of thing. I do kind of miss at this point the idea of dungeons that aren't completely linear and you can explore. Just because I've been playing this game so long. Yeah, oh yeah, players always just skip the optional stuff and all that. But not always. Sometimes people do. Sometimes the tank is new and will go explore and you follow them and just like, oh yeah, today I'm going to do this one. Because it, it's... 
I'm not always the attitude of just speedrun. Like, I love my big pulls. I like to big pull. Not because, like, yes, it is faster. That's cool. I'm all for, yeah, go fast, go fast. But not for the speed itself, but because it's more fun to me. I like the big pulls. It's more exciting than just going at a slow pace, killing one enemy at a time. That That's kind of boring to me. It's not the speed in itself. If if all small pools were all just the super fast, oh, go big, oh, that is, oh, like there's a dungeon later that the small pools actually are like these super exciting things. But like, I like the speed, and but sometimes it is also nice to just slow down too. And this is where one of the times where slowing down can happen. There are optional places where the tank might ex explore that they knew they don't know. And then, I, I, I don't know, I just don't understand the hate for this dungeon. Yeah, there's the goop in the last part, but it's not that annoying. It's a very short section of it. And like, it's a short dungeon. I think it's shorter than Sestasha and like, if you speedrun Sestasha and then take the same group and go speedrun Total Rack, Total Rack is shorter, I'm pretty sure. Or it's like very, very slightly longer than Sestasha. Some of the shortest dungeon runs I just have with everyone else is a newbie, nobody has gear, has been Total Rack. So it's like, why are people complaining about this so much? And then the bosses, it's, 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 it's. You know, after thinking about it, it is an evolution too. They, they're still trying to teach you with evolutions. The first boss is just a single enemy. It puts poisons on you. The second time, same boss, but now it has adds, similar pattern to Stasha. But now, one of those is a poison, and then one of them is a slow. They're introducing new debuffs and adds. And also, like, hey, you have to deal with poisons. This is the first dungeon where you have to really deal with poisons. And then the final boss is avoid the eggs, avoid the poison puddles, kill the adds, and kill the ad that appears on the boss, the tail, to give the boss a vulnerability up. That's a big, like, there's a big jump there. But it is all stuff you've learned so far to do. And I like that. And so, Total Rack is an... A tier dungeon. Come at me. Come at me. Hot takes here only at West Galber channel. Alright, Hawk Manor. I just threw it on D. Hawk Manor. Uh, I don't like this dungeon as I mean I it's 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 fine. The the succubus is a kind of really annoying. Just cause Oh, if, if the tank doesn't know how about stuns yet, and you don't have any melee DPS with stuns, you have to just wait them out. And even if the tank does know about stuns, it's on a cooldown, so it can't- so the tank can't stun every one of the Dark Mists, unless they're a Paladin, which you have Shield Bash, and other than that, why are you using Shield Bash? Like, you should not be using shield bath in norm bash in normal circumstances. That's just bad. But then, like, the first boss is good. It's, uh, it's throwing all the AoEs, but then the last boss is basically the same thing. The second boss is just gar- it's dumb. Like, yeah, there's two enemies, idea of two enemies at once. One does one thing, another does any other thing, but it's like- even back when I was new and trying to see, like, oh, what is this dungeon trying to teach me? When I'm trying to be, like, super analytical, and even right now, I'm being super analytical. What is this boss trying to teach you? I don't see what the second boss is trying to teach you. And then the third boss, the lamps is stupid. You can skip the first set. You could skip both sets if the healer knows, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. Let me just heal it. Ignore the lamps. Just let me heal. But, like, I don't know. It's, it's dumb otherwise, and... I mean, I always thought I liked Hawk Mana just because the big pools are fun. But thinking about it more, there's more stuff that annoys me than I'd like. So it's similar to Tamterra. It's similar to Tamterra in, like, I like it, but I also don't. I think just because the fur the bosses are a bit more interesting than Tamterra, I'm going to put it above Tamterra. That's not the right place. Abo above Tamterra. Alright, uh, what's that? Uh, Brave Longstop. 
This is another one that I kind of like, but also kind of don't. It's one of the few dungeons in the entire game that has four bosses. The first one has the ads that with a lot of poison. Like, this is where the dungeon's like, okay, let's go. We're going to throw in the monkeys. All right, tank, get learning how to deal with ranged enemies a lot. If we're going to throw in poisons. He has, like, four poisons at once. Good luck, healer. Uh, and then there's the, the second boss, the Drakes. All right, DPS, get ready dealing with Drakes. Have fun with that. There's two Drakes now. Ha, 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 And then there's the third boss. Now deal with bubbles and get it out of the bubble. Kill those DPS and also healers. You have to heal them. And also the tank has to deal with Airtar when he falls down. And then Airtar is like, here's all my poison puddles. And if that fight takes long, it's so bad. And if you don't get a tank who communicates... You just can't kill the boss because, oh, nobody's geared in this party. We're all low geared. And the tank refuses to get the boss out of the puddles. And so this is going to be awful. But, like, otherwise, if you have a tank that knows to pull the boss out of the puddles, it's not that bad. And, like, it is, like, the, it's the first dungeon where it's like, okay, we're starting to get serious here. And I like it for that. It's the first dungeon where, okay, everyone should now definitely, totally, unequivocally have all the all jobs. Everyone should have a job. The end. End of story. There is no, no changing that. Everyone should have a job by now. So, yeah, actually put to the test a little bit, and I like that. It's not the hardest once you know what you're doing. Uh, some of the, the exploring... Content is kind of annoying though, because there's that the, the 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 little little niches that nobody ever, not even like newbies ever go into the little niches and be like, oh here's a little niche here and there's enemies and no chests, and it's like, yeah, I don't know, I don't like the the exploring aspect of this dungeon is kind of lacking, but also it's kind of fun. The bosses are interesting. The pools are interesting. Even if you pull small, they're not the most boring pools. And there is also the the, the, the the flavor of the goblins running around and being attacked. You have to save the goblins. And so it's like, I don't know. I, I, I appreciate Ray Flux's long stop. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it below Thousand Maws of Todorak. Sunken Temple of Karn, meanwhile, is like, hey, welcome to die. Especially for the tanks, because this is where they start throwing in the bees. And Final Sting at this point is basically the same thing as death. The spell death. Just, tank's dead. Even if they have, if they're not perfectly gear, use a cooldown. Final Sting's basically always going to kill them, and that's kind of annoying. It's a bit harsh. Maybe if they introduced, like, a weaker Final Sting, and then... Like, maybe if they made Final Sting a bit weaker, and then you have the first boss that does give everyone doom, which is instant death. Instead of making normal enemies have instant death, just have the first boss have instant death. That's... That's... That's fine. But also, I don't like the second boss either, because... Those panels are kind of, they're, they're weird, they, some, they feel like they don't work, like, sometimes, the, when the, when they change around, the first one will still be glowing for a second or two before it actively changes around, and even though I know what I'm doing, I've died to that once or twice because I, okay, this panel is glowing, I'm standing on it for a full second of it glowing, and so I am no longer going to die. Oh, I'm dead. And that, uh, it's kind of annoying. And then the boss also spawns bees that can final sting. And that's even worse. So it's like, oh, the DPS didn't kill the ads fast enough. The tank is now dead no matter what. You can't heal that. So that, that first boss is kind of really bad. The second boss is really good for teaching a bunch of things. Cause just because, okay, there's the heart you have to kill first. Then you can start beating on the golem. And every time you shatter the heart, the golem gets angrier. It's a it's a progression of phases. It's like how a lot of bosses go. Phase one, okay, you're dealing with stuff. But then you get into phase two and things get harder. And then you get into phase three. And they're even harder. And 
The golem kind of simulates that at a low newbie level. The second phase, it'll start doing more AoEs, kick people around. Third phase, it'll start using Obliterate a lot. It'll do everything from the second phase even more. And it's like... You don't really get that in most other dungeons ever. All bosses will... There will be an evolution, but it's not like a phase-based evolution. It's just, okay, mechanic one, mechanic two, mechanic three, mechanic four. Nev not, okay, it's gonna do the same things, but more things. And so I really appreciate the second boss for that. And then third boss is also... It, the, the Sunjers through the whole f dungeon are really, really annoying. Putting them on the paddles is really annoying just because... Sometimes they don't want to properly place themselves. Like, sometimes as a tank, I'll be pulling them, and they'll get right up into my hitbox. They will hug me super tight. Other times, they'll be, like, a full three yalms away from me and auto-attacking me. And it's like, how are you auto-attacking me from that far away? You're a max melee ranged enemy somehow now? How are you doing that? How are you using max melee range? You're, like... Ah, why? And then there's like the puzzle thing. The puzzle, the puzzle with the flame and fruit. Eh, that's... Take it or leave it. And the final boss, you basically just ignore all the mechanics again. I... It, eh. I like that it has paralyze and tries to get the tank to like, Hey, start using interrupt more. The paralyze is very major. And it, it's really bad to get hit by that. But also, you can also just stand behind the boss to get rid of Paralyze. Also, which is another thing I forgot to mention for Hawk Manor. The final boss, the all the, the long cast spells it does, just run behind the final boss, and it will cancel the cast. So the, like, the Thunder 4 or whatever, run behind her, and she won't cast it. She'll fail. Thunder 3 as well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and you can do that for the final boss in Karn. And I'm... The Sun Jurors, the rough pacing at the beginning for the death enemies. Uh, second boss is great. But I think the first, like, most of the dungeons in the pools kind of bring it down. Even if the second boss is great, third boss is kind of alright. The overall puzzle and the, the stones, eh. I'm not really too big of a fan on that just because it... It takes so much time to gather them, even if you only do the flame and fruit ones. Uh, I'm gonna put it right below Sestasha just because it doesn't do really anything special besides that other dungeons don't do better anyway. Alright, cut his cry though. Uh, I I actually really like this dungeon. Like the first bit's kind of boring. The dealing with the the ants that's kind of eh. And then the ant boss. Oh, and there's the bombs. That's like, okay. Final sting her a lot, but didn't instant kill you. These explosions will definitely kill you. Get out of them. That, I like that. That, that's, hey, this is the real evolution of it. Like, okay, you now have to actually avoid these big major attacks. But the, the ant boss is kind of dumb. Nobody knows the strat anymore. The strat being... The healer will heal the tank, and then tank the ads around the outside of the arena. The tank should never touch the ads. The healer should just throw a heal, throw a regen, and then just run a race around the edge of the arena. That's the strat for the ant boss. And nobody knows that anymore. Like, nobody knows that strat anymore. So yeah, uh... Cool concept? No, not really. Second boss, though, the second area I do like. I do like the dealing with the multiple different mobs. You have the little crabs, you have the sabotenders, you have the birds all at once in, like, the, all the same packs of enemies, and those are fun little sections. And then you get to the second boss, and that's a good boss. I, I think the second boss is good, because it, it does, it has the dot, which is like, hey, he learned to heal this. It can be put on anyone and not just always the tank now uh and then there's the avoiding when it goes under the sand yeah it's it's a bit of a waste of a time to have to deal with waiting for it to come out of the sand 
but you're like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not too bad. And then there's also, uh... What else? Oh yeah, if you get let it go on long enough, it does the the whirlpool attack. That's kind of cheap. That kind of brings it down a little, just because you cannot really know that that whirlpool attack is going to come out. Because it does one uh, chasing person, then it does it again, then it could do a bunch of them. And then you have to be at the edge of the arena to avoid it? Huh? How are you supposed to know that without getting hit by it the first time? You kind of don't. But then the, the last section of the fight, uh, dun uh, the dungeon, is dumb. The slimes have regen, and it's a pretty potent regen, so you have to really focus the slimes down, even if the tank pulls big and it's kind of annoying. But then the Chimera, as an introduction to the Chimera, this is a good, like, maybe tone down the damage a little bit for newbies, but like, eh, eh like, actually it's kind of toned down enough as it is. But as an introduction to Chimeras, that's good. I really like the introduction to Chimeras. And you'll be fighting them a lot, so it's good to get known early how it goes. And so I'm gonna put Cutter's Cry below Sestasha. Above Karn, but below Sestasha. Stone Vigil now. Now, Stone Vigil. Okay, so... This is the first big boy dungeon, I would say. The, the first... A hard dungeon. I mean, it's not like... I mean, hard dungeon. It's not like it's, uh really hard or anything, but it's like the first dungeon that will test you even if you're doing the single pools. Even if you have decent gear, single pools, this is where damage starts to take a spike. And so it's like, it's the first major test that a Realm Reborn gives you. It's not anything huge, but hey, it's something. Uh, I did two runs of this today, and they were both really wild. The first one, the tank was just super undergeared and was pulling like 20 enemies in a row. And then the second one, the tank was a road to 70 tank. And if you don't know, at the time of this, Aether is locked down. We are congested. Nobody can make a character here. So in less than three months, that's how long road to 70 lasts, the, the server went from preferred to congested and locked down. That's that's a huge leap. And so that's like, wow! That's wild! That really that, that doesn't really have any effect on the tension though. Like the it is kinda hard to big pull here if you don't know already what you're doing. Cause some of the enemies, like the ice sprites, those hurt really hard. And it's like they hurt surprisingly hard. All the enemies that use magic in this place hurt surprisingly hard. Well, I guess not the little dragonflies. They don't too much. But, like, it's... Wow, this is such a huge step up from even Karn. Uh, it's... Like, and Cutter's Cry barely hurts at all. So, the fact that this place hurts so hard is really shocking. As for the bosses, uh, first boss? It, it's alright. I don't like the swinges. Most tanks don't know how to deal with the lion's breath and end up inadvertently hitting, like, t a, a teammate every single time. It's annoying for, like, Black Mage to get around that fight just because, oh, the boss is randomly running in the other direction now, get moving, or else you're going to get hit by Swinge because it targeted you, and now it's going to do it twice, and... I, eh. I think I'm being too hard on it. It's basic mechanics, and they're e they once you know it, it's not too bad, I guess. Second boss, though, can go just disappear. Dealing with the cannons is stupid. Like, it does hurt if you don't use the cannons, but it's kind of like, oh, the Isgabon descends from the skies, shoot it with the cannon. But then, like, the actual boss doesn't do any damage. You could basically get away with, like, two to three heals through the entire lengthy boss fight. And that's kind of sad. And then, like, Isgabon himself isn't all that much uh, harder hitting. But, like, it, he at least has mechanics. He does... I don't like that he leaves the arena again, but he does have actual mechanics, which is... I appreciate that much, at least. But I don't know. I, eh. Eh. 
Also, if you don't know the, the ice puddles, you can stack those together, so you don't have to make the entire arena be covered in ice puddles. But, um, just for it being what it is, I think I'm actually gonna leave it there. I do like Stone Vigil. It's a good kind of tough, and it does start to be like, hey, newbie, get learning. Get learning so hard. And then the male dark hole, that one's going straight into F below that that one I'm not moving that. Okay, so I'm fine with exploring aspects if they pulled off well. The exploring aspects of the first part of this dungeon are terrible. You have to stand in the button and wait for 20 seconds. But it's multiplicative, so the more people in it, the less time it takes. But people don't know that, so not everyone stands in the button, and so it takes very long, and you're taking damage, and and then it just opens a door to a very small room. Why not just have the door open? I do like the, the purple crystals in that you can, like, you could literally wall-to-wall -wall that entire first section of the dungeon and be able to safely heal it just because of the purple crystals. That, that is really cool. I really like that. That's the only good thing I can say about Zemeo Darkhold. Because using that in the actual first boss, needing the boss in the purple crystals is really annoying. And it hurts surprisingly hard if you're out of the purple crystals. The ads in that fight are super annoying. Why are they even there? And then the second area. Frog Mountain. I have been sticky-tongued through the ground way too many times. I can be in the middle of the walkway, not even at the edge, and get sticky-tongued to the bottom of Frog Mountain, and it's just like, oh, well, guess, guess I'll die then. And then that's also where they start introducing the exploding crystals, which are in the worst positions because they have some bogeys in there. And if the tank doesn't know how to deal with ranged enemies, you have to deal with them being in the explosions. And then the second boss is just it's very simple for what it is. Like, oh, here's some random AoE damage that doesn't do a lot. Okay, now I'm going to randomly throw some AoEs out that are very slow casting and non-threatening, even for dungeon standards. And it's like, it's really boring. And then the third area has more of the waiting buttons. Like, why are these waiting buttons here? It's so boring. Why? No. And then the final boss, you have to kill the ads just like the, the, the final boss of Tamterra. It's the final boss of Tamterra again, but it will do very basic AoEs in your direction. And it could even like target the ranged player who is off to the side, so most people don't even have to deal with it. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I... I I just think everything about Zemeo Darkhold is terrible. Just absolutely awful. The worst. That's why it's F rating. Definitely F rating. <sighs> Alright, now we move on to Aram Vale. Uh, I don't hate Aram Vale like everyone else. The fact that they added AoEs to Coin Counter, a Coin Counter didn't used to have AoEs by the way, is a good way for newbies to learn. Hey, here's how this boss works, here how all enemies like this will work, anytime you see 1000 ton swing, it will always do an AoE like this. That's a good way to learn. Uh, the mechanics for the first and third boss don't really teach anything, but it does at least like... It's something unique to this dungeon only. And I, I can appreciate that at least. The The first room, people have problems with the first room. So that's a newbie tank thing only really. So it's like, so? Like once you know that you just stick to the left wall, it's mostly going to be okay. Sometimes you still get really rough pulls. So yeah, I can, I can see where people are kind of coming from with the frogs, but like, once you know how to deal with the frogs properly and the patrollers, it's not all that bad. People standing in the gold vial is their fault, and not like the healers, unless it's the healer standing in the gold vial. It's very non-threatening in general, aside from 
newbie knowledge. That much is, yeah, okay, I can get that. But, but beyond that, it's like, whatever. Uh, all the eggs. If you let those hatch, it's a lot of EXP. And I used to be of the opinion that, yeah, you just kill the age eggs, do the dungeon faster. But then I came around like, okay, yeah, actually, letting the age eggs hatch is a good idea. Let the eggs hatch. That's fine. Uh... Coin Counter is a fun boss. I think it's a really good boss. It's a good, like, just like the Chimera, it's a good tutorial to that enemy type. And then Morable Boss is also a good tutorial for Morables. Bad Breath barely comes out, so you only have to deal with it, like, twice the whole fight. So that's a good tutorial for that. But also there's the Germination, where it spawns, like, a bunch of eggs. That one's kind of, like, okay, I guess. Eh. But generally, I'm not so down and out on Armvale like everyone else. I wouldn't say I entirely like it, because, like, the... In terms of looks, it's boring. This is the first time actually mentioning, like, the looks of Dungeon, really. But, like, in terms of looks, it's boring. But it's very not that... Aside from, oh, though, it's the newbie killer. Not really all that special. I don't know why I can't put... Where? There we go. It's it's, 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 it's a high B. B plus. Yeah, that, that's, that's how you do it. Wanderer's Palace. Okay, so, Wanderer's Palace is... I'm, I'm, I like this dungeon, so... God, what was the first boss of the dungeon again? You go to the... That's the, the, the Gobble... Okay, maybe I don't like this dungeon as much as I thought. So the first boss is the Gabu, right? Yeah, it's the Gabu. What does the Gabu even do again? I think it just like puts poison on everyone. Wow, this dungeon's really forgettable. Uh, the second boss is the slimes. That one's also kind of really forgettable. And then the third boss is the Tonberry King. Okay, yeah, this dungeon is very forgettable aside from Tonberry King and the Stalker. Tonberry King is like... Tonberry King is like a fine boss fight. I don't... I don't think anyone really like understands the mechanics properly for that one. So it's just... It becomes a DPS the boss down. And then boom. Yeah, you're done. And then there's also the, the Stalkers. The, the idea of the stalker is really good. I like that. I like the stalkers just because it's like, oh, you have to be fast. Be quick, 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 quick. And it, it does reward being quick. And they're like, oh, man, this is actually a general threat. Run. Ah, it's fear. Fear factor. Ah. I don't know. I'm. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to gonna see a lot of good stuff about Wanderer's Palace. That's why I just put it up in A to start, because I'm like, eh, it's going to be like A, B. But no, I think I'm actually putting it... It's going to be our first D. Because it's really forgettable. The oil, the I just remember, yeah, definitely a D. Because all the oils, using the oils is really annoying, and the winches. The second area with the stock is, is fine. It's kind of annoying that you do have to also take required damage from them instead of being rewarded. Yeah. Wanderer's Palace, not that great. Cape, or yeah, Cape Westwind. Castrum Meridianum. So, cutscenes. Before you would skip them, but also cutscenes, it is a bit overly long. The fact, may, back in the day, maybe... Back in the day, it might have been really cool and epic and hard, but like, I don't know, it's, it's, with or without the cutscenes, it's kind of really bland. Nobody understands the cannons and how strong those are. Nobody understands how to fight Liv Livia anymore, even when you teach them, like, hey, you have to use the cannon, then you have to run to the middle. Nobody listens, nobody understands. People who try to speedrun it don't know any of the speedrun strats. Oh, I'm gonna go fast. That means grab every enemy. No, you skip like half the enemies in the dungeon if you know what you're doing. And so it's like... I don't know. It's... I don't like 
any experience that I had that was cast from Rainy Autumn, like, yeah, for the story, it's great, but, like, beyond the story, it's kind of worthless. I don't really like all in, in, at all. The Praetorium is the same way, but also the fights are a lot more interesting. Like, there's a lot of phases to that Ultima elevator fight. That one has a lot of different phases, like, dealing- there's a lot, a lot, a lot of mechanics you just don't see anymore. That, if you did see, was- is really interesting. I actually got to experience those back in the day, even with item level I-130s all over the place. I actually got to experience a bunch of mechanics that nobody ever sees anymore. And so, you know, yeah, I'm sorry, it's- it's a bit better than Meridianum. I do like the story. Uh, it does get long for repeat runs. Um, you know, in general, I'm actually going to say it's a low B. It's not completely offensive. It's long. I'll give it that. But it's like, it's trying to be a finale. And it's, it does do that well. Of course, after a hundred runs, it's going to get stupid. But... That's every dungeon, basically. Praetorium just gets it worse just because of it being a very long dungeon. Amdapur Keep. Uh, I do like this dungeon. First boss, kind of annoying. You kind of just ignore the ads as they appear. Especially the big one, you just DPS it down. Second boss is... What is the second boss here? You do... You go up, you go... I don't remember. Oh, Demon Wall. Demon Wall, yeah. I remember Demon Wall. They had to nerf that so hard before I joined the game. And then even after they nerfed it, I'd had wipes there just because people kept getting themselves knocked off. And it's like, oh my god, ah. Oh. There's, I got a lot of light wipes on Demon Wall. Now it's kind of a, just a joke. You j it just dies. Now it's really a joke. And then final boss. You just DPS down. Eh, I don't got really much to say on it besides that. Mid C. Below Hawk, above Tamterra. Pharaoh Sirius. This dungeon sucks. Okay, so, first boss. Randomly, everyone's randomly exploding, and you can't avoid that even if you're doing all the mechanics right because of how his attacks work. And it's just a complete mess. Second boss is a. Uh, Is the zoo. The zoo is really annoying. If you kill any of the ads, it just goes super furious and kills everyone, and that's annoying. Third boss. Dies in like five seconds. What is even the point of that? Final boss. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I like the final- I like the siren. That's a good fight, but it's the only good part of the entire dungeon. I like the look of the dungeon more. That's why I'm not putting it in F. Like, Zemile Darkhold, I'm not- was just ugly to look at, too. Pharaoh series at least looks neat as you're exploring. Even for all the no maybe- I remembered all the crystals exploding after the second boss. Big pulls, even with a good tank, can get really messy. The valves- okay, yeah, I'm gonna- I'm gonna drop it down to F above Cop Bell. I'd wince more at Copper Bell or Zemile than I would Pharaoh Sirius. Speaking of Copper Bell, uh, Copper Bell mines hard. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it there because first boss is really stupid with the 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 dredges. So strat back in the day was. You just stand at the entrance and DPS it down. You just ignored the fire, stand in the fire, DPS higher. And it was really hit or miss if that ever worked. Jiggy in the second boss is the slime, but also somehow worse because it's long and he moves a lot. And there's just way so many things going on, it's like... A sensory overload of garbage. 
And the third boss is you have to keep feeding it. It's at least a real mechanic, though. And the trash mob fights aren't all too terrible. They're interesting enough. So it's at least not as bad as Compavel Mines. But it's still pretty bad, so it, it gets a higher ranking, but not too much higher. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Hawk Manor Hard. Oh. Uh, first fall, it's the segmented, oh yeah, it's the segmented parts of Hawk can be really annoying. Like, oh, kill one enemy, grab a key, open door. Kill one enemy, grab a key, open door. That part's also kind of dumb, but I'm still gonna leave it there. Hawk Manor Hard does that at the beginning but then gets better and allows for some really fun big pulling. Uh, first boss is kind of just tank and spank. The mechanics don't matter. People get afraid of the, like, death-looking circle, but that doesn't affect you. That just revives the dead ads. So it's like, those don't even matter. Um, second boss, you go... So you take the teleport... What is that? What where, where is that? Oh yeah, you go down the hallways. Second boss I like, because it's like, it's... You have to move it around a bunch. It does a bunch of different AoE patterns. And that second hallway area is one of the most fun big pulls in all of A Realm Reborn. I actually really like that one. And then the final area is also another nice big pull if the tank knows what they're doing. The final boss is... Not a fan of, uh, not a fan of power creep, because if you're too good, you can instant wipe. You have to specifically meter your DPS output, and that's kind of annoying of that, like, if you don't know the exact percentages you're looking for, you're either waiting forever to hit that point, because, oh, we don't want to over DPS, let's slow down. But you still have to hit her ten more DP or ten more percent before the ad spawn. But if you do fifteen percent, you instantly die. And so there's this five percent window that you don't know exactly where it is, and it's just really annoying. And then you have to kill the t the ads down. I like it more than Hawk Manor, but not all that much more. Um. Below Karn, above Praetorium, I'll say. It's a, it's a low B again. I, you can tell I have some pretty high standards, though. Which, actually, this is going to be the first one that I think we rank pretty high. The Lost City of Amdapur is one I actually really like. Like, a lot. Like, I actually like this one. I like this one a lot because, uh, yeah, the, 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 the big poison sack things are kind of annoying. But that's, like, the only annoying part of this entire dungeon, I'd say. Oh, I guess there's also the last part. Okay, so the poison sacks are annoying, but the pool sizes are fun. It also introduces mimics and, like, lets mimics be a thing in this game. And I wish they did it more. Um... First boss the is the Keeper of Halidom, yeah. That's a cool boss of the like, like, hey, this person's getting trapped, free them, but also you know ahead of time that you are the one being trapped, so it's a good way of doing it. It's not just instant you're trapped, boom. You have time to react. And also it's a long, it's a sh lenient DPS check, so there's a lot of time to save you. Uh, the second boss, people don't understand it, but I actually like the idea of it, of... The tank has to kill ads to keep refreshing their buff to keep aggro on the boss. Because the boss actually doesn't have an aggro table. Like, it'll say who has aggro, but it actually does not have an aggro table. It's entirely based on the debuff. And that's cool. Like, I wish more bosses did that kind of gimmicky stuff with that and do it well like that boss does. That kill the ad to refresh your buff. But otherwise, it doesn't do all that much, so it's otherwise kind of boring. But it's a neat idea. I like the idea of it. Uh, the final area is kind of annoying with the the hitting, killing the pillies to kill the guy in the center. If the tank doesn't know the positioning for the pools, it's hard to AoE them and break the pillars. 
And then Diablos himself, I like the door mechanic, but also I like ignoring it and just DPSing him down because it's like, he's not supposed to let you do that. He's definitely supposed to just be, I'm big evil. If you don't do this, I'm going to destroy you. Roar! And I like, I don't know, it's one of the few bosses where it's like, I like that you could just skip the mechanics. Most other bosses, it's like, oh, skipping the mechanics kind of ruins the fight. But this one, it's like, no, it's actually kind of interesting that it skips mechanics. Also, remembering which doors are which is kind of hard. Especially now that you can't do markers as well mid-fight. It's kind of a relic of the time. Because you could, used to be able to place the ground markers mid-fight. And that would help you keep track of doors. But I don't know, it, it's both an interesting fight with and without skipping mechanics, is what I'd say. I don't know, I, I, I really like Amped. It, it looks beautiful as a dungeon. And even when you get inside, it's like, oh, the tone changes, but it looks interesting still. And so I'm actually going to put it as our first S tier dungeon here. Halatali Hard, meanwhile, um... First boss is kind of weird with the needing the shield to dodge the 1,111 ton swinger, whatever it is. That one's kind of weird. Uh, second boss is... I can't even remember. What is the second boss of this dungeon? It's super forgettable. I'm gonna not remember. I cannot remember it. For the life of me, I cannot remember. It's just that forgettable of the boss. Oh, 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 oh. It's the, the Katoba boss. With the orbs. That boss is dumb. And final boss is kind of interesting, but also kind of annoying because of how quick it cycles through the mechanics. Oh, Two people are randomly trapped by the scepter. People have to go click it to save them. And then 20 seconds later, he immediately summons another tether that you have to go click it. And it's like, why are you doing this so fast? Oh my god. It's it's definitely a downgrade from normal Halatali, I'd say. I'm gonna put it above Tamterra still. That's about where I'd say. It's a, it's a mid-C. It's a C average. Brayflock's Hard is really interesting. I, I, I actually really like real Brayflock's Hard. It has some big pull potential that's fun. Dealing with the, the, the guy raining bombs on you is actually interesting. Uh, the, getting the key can be kind of like weird just because it's the monkey that has it, I'm pretty sure. The monkeys, it's like, why do the monkeys have it? But then the first, the boss is fun. The snipers, it's like, ooh, that's interesting. The patterns that can come out of that. I like the sniper. Uh, second area is a cool reversal on the... Everyone ignores saving the goblins in Brayflock's normal. So Brayflock's hard, you have to save all the goblins. And I find that interesting. And also you could just do it all at once. You could save them all at once. So it's just one big pull to the second boss. And I like that. Second boss is kind of like... Always just tank and spank and like it's like the ground gets all poison and it's like weird I th I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be mechanics there but I don't know what they are uh yeah I'm I don't know and then the path to the final boss is great except for the 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 ads that keep spawning the 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 birds that keep spawning they they get in the way kind of and then the uh, the final boss is actually really cool. I'm I don't like downtime usually, but this boss actually gives you active stuff to do during the time the downtime. You have to quick pa panic, panic, get all the bombs out! Ah, get all the bombs out! Oh no, you have to get the bombs out and kill this giant bomb, and then also dodge it as it runs through the middle. And it's like it's an interesting downtime. It's not a super boring downtime. I think I do like it above normal Brave Flocks, but I, do I like high A? Too, mm. 
I don't know. High? Yeah, I'm going to leave it right there. I think I like it more than Total Rack. I really like it. What I don't like is Hole Breaker Isle. Uh... No, above Pharos, but it's an F. It's definitely an F tier. It is so boring. The Dole Breaker is what I call it. Me and a lot of people call it Dole Breaker. Dole Breaker is just terrible. Like, the, 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 the traps in the first area, the monkey boss is weirdly annoying and finicky with how he works with the trees. Sometimes people hit the tree and it just won't go after the banana for like three AoEs and then it goes after the banana. And it's not really interesting of a boss. Otherwise, the cave system's kind of annoying with the like, oh hey, we got mimics again. But also in the worst implementation possible in that randomly some of these many, many chests you have to open have the items to progress forward and... Then there's also the Nanankas that can spawn a bunch of mini Nankas. It's, it's just annoying. I do like the worm boss. The second boss is the bright spot of Dole Breaker. Going into the... Dodging the Whirlpool is actually kind of fun. And like dealing with the bubbles and not accidentally running into a bubble. That's actually kind of fun. But then the final area is also garbage. And the Kraken is always always one of the worst bosses in the entire game. I hate the Kraken. And Tentacle Kraken is annoying. What isn't annoying is Tamterra. I think I am gonna put it in S because I actually really like this dungeon. All of the bosses, the pools are fun. The bosses are interesting and have unique mechanics. The first boss is like, yeah, you're just a tank and spank. But it gets people to panic because it's like, oh, there's a marker on me, I gotta get away. No, the uh, the solution is actually everyone stand together and just attack the boss and don't use AoE. And that's like, oh, aha, flipping your expectations. And then the, the second area and dealing with the coffins can be kind of slow. But the pools there are interesting and avoiding the AoEs in them is fun. And then the second boss itself is actually also really fun. Protect the Lollafell. I hate Lollafells because Lollafells are evil. But also, it's interesting that you have to protect him. You have to be fast to protect him. And you can't just keep spamming heals on him to save him. And it's it's interesting, you know, it's, it changes the dynamic of priorities. Yeah, you want a DPS, but you also got to protect this target who's easy pr to protect. But also, there's a you, there's a lot of different space you have to cover. And the tank placement can really matter with actually getting things good. I don't know. I, eh. I may be overestimating that second boss, but I do like it for what it is. And then the final area is kind of meh. Actually, no. I, I'm thinking of a different dungeon. I like the final area too. And then Edda. This is where Edda's story, it's like, the whole story of this dungeon is amazing, and the Edda parts, and like, it leans so far into the creep factor, and the boss itself is really interesting. It teaches you the protect the Lollafell in the middle, but then also is a, hey, you have to protect the middle, but now you have to kill these ads to prevent the boss from doing a giant AoE. It changes the framing but in an interesting way, I'd say. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it at S rank. Below Lost City, but still S rank. I really like this dungeon. Stone Vigil Hard. Um, this dungeon kinda also is bad, I'd say. I don't really like it. First boss, kind of dumb. People don't know how to deal with the ads, and dealing with them is kind of actually annoying anyway. Kukafara is one of the worst bosses in the game again. The guys who can turn into Avises are annoying because the DPS checks that are weirdly tight, even with people knowing to stun. And then the final boss is fine. The final boss is fine. It has no aggro table, and I actually like changes a pace like that that hey you can dodge everything but there is no tank good luck and so yeah I'm I, I don't I don't like stone vigil hard I'm gonna it's 
not quite an F, but it's a low D. It's, um, I'd take it over Copper Bell Hard, though. Snowcloak has more of those Avises I don't like, but it's only in the last area. It has some weird pacing in the middle section. Or the last section. The entire last section is weirdly paced, actually. Uh, first boss is interesting. It used to have more mechanics that you dealt with, and I really like that fight. It was really interesting of a boss. It's kind of meh now. Second boss, nobody understands, and even when you do understand it, it feels really slow. It's not that long when you know what you're doing, but it feels really slow. And then F Fenrir is actually a really fun fight. Like, I, I like Fenrir. It's, I actually was kind of happy that the in uh, Zadnor there was Fenrir mechanics, because I thought it was fun to do those mechanics. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna put it high C. No, actually I'm gonna put it high, um, slightly below Sestasha. Just right below Sestasha. It's a high, it's a middle B. High to middle B. Sestasha hard, meanwhile, is a definite F. I do not like Sestasha Hard either. Like, some of the big pulls are fun, but you get to the end of the first section, wait for the water to drain. First boss has is really finicky with its one-shot mechanics, the dots, and the tail screw is really finicky. Then you have the crabs out of the ground. Uh, what was the second boss? Oh yeah, Giant Pirate Dude! Uh, I actually kind of like Giant Pirate Dude. He's not too bad. He... He's a neat fight. I've got a lot of wipes there. People don't know about... People don't know how to free people correctly. But he, he's fun when once people are on the page of, okay, what this boss does, getting rid of the ads. He's actually really fun, and I really like it. And then the Kraken. The Kraken ruins everything. It's, it's Sestasha again, but worse in every way. Like, even the, like, oh, look how pretty it is. It's it's too much. They go too much of, look at all the colors, and, and just, just stop it. Just stop it. Stop it. Sunken Temple of Karn Hard. The Sunken Facer, the sun, or the Sunjur, or whatever he's called, the Sunken First Boss kind of annoying with the targeting because th this is the one boss in the entire game people complained about all oh, tab targeting doesn't work and I'm like it works fine for me except for this boss the first boss of this dungeon is like the only time in the entire game where I'm like tab target doesn't work no matter how many hit times I hit tab why won't you target the tail why won't you target the arm why am I manually clicking this Brrr! And then there's like the weird ad phase with the the instant kill sand traps and they can be weirdly placed and like trap people in places where they can't escape if they don't if they aren't already in a good position. First boss really sucks. Second boss is the cactar. I like that the cactar just cuz it's a good use of using the idea of protecting the boss with ads and all that. And it's a good amount of ads so that it's a, you can get some AoE in and not feel like you're wasting it. And it's it's a DPS trick of, okay, we have to kill the ad and then also break the concentration of the boss. And then the final boss is really, really good. The path up, the third section is really dumb, I would say, but the, the actual boss is really good. I like having to dodge all the mummies. I do don't know quite what it is to dodge the like oh the boss targets this player how do you i i never understood how you stop the the boss from putting like three stacks of the debuff on a random person that is it just a stun can you stun that i don't think i'm pretty sure i've tried stun but it never worked so i, I never understood it 
But it was, I always found it fun. I like all the bosses here. The pools are good. So I'm going to put it as like a low A. I'm going to put it below Stone Vigil. I, I, I prefer Stone Vigil, I think, with a good group. Actually, um, actually no. I, thinking about it, no, I prefer this. Yeah, that's, that's about right. I'd see that. Now, Keeper of the Lake. Now, okay, but I'm going to lay my bias here on just on my sleeve. I joined the game in patch. Uh, what was it? Patch, 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 patch. Three point. Uh, yeah, three point. Two point five five. I don't know why that took me so much. But I, when I joined the game, expert roulette was keeper of the lake. Wanderer's Palace Hard and Amdapur Keep Hard. So I did these dungeons a lot. Like a lot, a lot. And I like all three of these dungeons. Keeper of the Lake is one of my favorite dungeons in the entire game. SS tier. I like all of the bosses. The first boss is actually fun dealing with the bird with its different armaments if you don't get the proper team that knows how to deal with the bombs it can be quite annoying it can be, get pretty messy but it's fun to deal with even if it gets messy and i i love amdapur the keep of the lake the second boss can get kind of annoying and the path up to it's kind of meh but the actual boss itself i like the challenge of properly Baiting the lines and also not standing in the fire. It's it's fun. And then the boss itself. Midgardsimer is also just... Oh my god. So good. This The music. The path up to him so good. The pulls are fun. The music of the boss is fun. The mechanics are fun. Dodging all the eight wees is fun. It's, it's, it's one of the best boss fights in the dungeons in the entire game. Oh... Wanderer's Palace Hard, meanwhile, is also just really good. I I love this part of the dungeon. The part of the dungeon. I love this dungeon too. It's the first boss is the guy on the the guy the the the, the mount, and he throws the the spears. I and I I I, I like that. I like that boss. He he doesn't he he can get really messy if people aren't on top of things, but not messy enough to just instantly wipe you. The second boss, the can get kind of man with guessing and checking on the totems, but I do like the totem mechanic in uh, in theory. And then the final boss is like the one time in the game that tanks aren't supposed to just stand still with the boss. You actively have to kite it around and do it in a proper way, in a smart way. And people have to follow the tank closely or they're going to get hit by big AoEs. The pools, the big pools, you can wall to This is where I learned wall to wall pulling. This is where I really learned wall to wall. And it was... Oh, so good. Peep, every single run, everyone would always wall to wall. There wasn't a single run back in the day that you could get that wasn't a wall to wall pool for this dungeon. People just went ham. And it was so fun. Dealing with the, the areas of buff, the buff banners, that wasn't even part of it. People had this on lockdown, and it was so fun. SS. Amdapur Keep Hard is the lowest of them, but I'm still going to put it high S tier because all the bosses are fun. The first boss is an Odin like. You have to hide behind the towers, but you have ample time to realize what you have to do. The second boss is like a. is like ping ponging around when you. Revealing it with the light, but it's it's fun when you know how to deal with it and like when you ping them together It's like oh my god. We were in sync. That was glorious and then the final and then I'm the 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 the, the path up to the final boss is kind of what drags down this dungeon a lot because it's the 
the four, the crash down. All the demon walls are slowly moving in. And if you don't kill all the enemies in time, it's an instant wipe. But you don't lose any progress, so it's not at really all that punishing. And it's like, okay then, I guess. And then, uh... Yeah, eh. But then the final boss is all... I'd like... Even though it has a bunch of weird down... And yeah, the vet downtime brings this down still too. But like, you have to kill the free people from the slimes. And then the final time, it's... One person gets in a big slime and they can't help DPS. So you have to free them and then kill the ads with their help. And it's... It makes you feel like a team in a good way. And yeah, and... So I had... No, even though I did these dungeons so many times, I never got tired of them. I never got tired of them. It was grand. And that is my rankings for every A Realm Reborn dungeon. And yeah, we're over an hour in. I, well, maybe not with after editing because I have a lot of, I got to edit around because coughing and all that. But yeah, that's my A Realm Reborn uh, rankings. A lot of bees in there. It's... It's it's a lot. If Sestasha is the bare minimum of the bit, the average, there's a lot of below. <sighs> That's kind of mean though, because I'd prefer Sestasha over Snowcloak, I think. But I wouldn't say Snowcloak is bad or below average or anything like that. I'm just putting Sestasha. I'm I'm. I'm putting Sestasha on a pedestal to say like, hey, this is the tutorial dungeon. You have to be a better dungeon than a more fun and a better dungeon than the tutorial. And if you do things wrong, that points off of that. But if you exceed tutorial dungeon levels, that's bonus points. So it's like, I'm giving Sestasha an unreasonable amount of, like justification of it's a good tutorial and it's like this is your first experience so let's actually re-rate this of like as a dungeon itself i would say it's a low b i might i'd put it above praetorium still but i'd say let's move it there then so now it's a bit more even of let's see we got one two three so five nine 14 dungeons below Sestasha, 6, 11, 14, 16 above Sestasha. So that's that's about even. So about half. So yeah, that's that's about right. So about half of A Realm Reborn was good to amazing and half was bad. So now that's that's A Realm Reborn. Let's get into Heaven's Ward.